Our videos feature voices and visuals created using AI technology, intended for adult entertainment. These depictions should not be mistaken for real celebrities. There is no endorsement, affiliation, or association with the personalities portrayed. These should be seen as nothing more than poor imitations. Viewer discretion is advised when watching this content. Titty Sprinkles. previously on Tyranny of Dragons. You both notice a sudden movement from behind the trees and manage to avoid dark figures lunging out from them. Grog, you fail to notice in time and two figures grab you from either side and pull you back, off the horse and into the darkness of the trees. Help me, the trees are attacking me. Fine, go and find the cultist Stallone. I'll go and rescue Grog, which I thought we were over the solo bullshit, but you're as stubborn as ever. Go on, fuck off and be a loner. You never appreciated friendship. I move on back towards the area where Groge was taken. And I keep moving forward, saying not another word. Good evening, gentlemen. Welcome to the next session. I hope our newest players are ready for what's installed for them. I'm not. You just had me taken away into the darkness by trees. I think they were the bandits we were warned about, and not trees. Whatever they are, I'm worried my time with you guys is about to be cut short. Don't panic, Bush Daddy. Mr. Big is here and will make sure you're not hurt or violated in any way. No one said anything about being violated? I just assumed there would be some inappropriateness happening. You're so small and helpless. No, I'm not. Like a baby raccoon, so tiny and feeble. Odd choice of words. But regardless of how much of your innocence is stripped from your naked, shaken body. Please stop talking. Papa Bill will be there to cradle you in my warm embrace and shield you from the pain. Even for me, this is getting weird. I can't believe I'm missing the Jew. Right, well, shall we continue with the campaign? Why is Donald here? I'm part of this as well, dumbass. Donald will not be joining right away. First, we will go to where Gurmley was left off. On the edge of a campsite, you can see Grog being thrown into a cage which holds another, a tall satyr playing a lute. The cage is closed and locked and the bandits sit around a campfire which has just been lit. You count five of them. Am I out of sight of the bandits? Yes, you are currently hidden behind a tree. Before I do anything, I wanted to ask you, did I attune to my new sword yet? Yes, you did. In the time spent in Greenest, after the death of your party members and the time you took to ride east, I will say enough time has passed for you to have become attuned with the sword. Well, sniff my hair and call me Jessica. That's fantastic. I would like to look around and see if I could spot any corvids. And you thought I was weird. Give me an investigation check. Let's go, Nat 20 straight off the bat. You search around the tree branches and you spot a raven perched several feet away from you. Its eyes watching you as you notice it. It caws loudly and ruffles its feathers. I wave my hand at it. Hello, noble raven, do you understand me? Why are you having a conversation with a damn bird on the edge of a bandit camp? I have my reasons. I am talking quietly, so not to alert the bandits of my position. Then I'll need a stealth check. With disadvantage as you're wearing chainmail. One of the bandits turns his head. At the same time, the raven caws loudly. The bandit turns back to the others. The raven tilts its head and caws again, only this time you hear words coming from it as well. A human that speaks my words, what sorcery has befallen here? Only that which allows me to talk with you. My blade holds that power and it grants me this ability. My name is Gormley Whitebeard. Do you have a name? Of course I have a name. I am Typhon, watcher over the harrowing woods and knower of many things. What are the harrowing woods? The place where you stand. A place that reveals one's inner torments and infects the mind. Sounds like a bad place to be taken into deeper, huh, George? Stop having a talk with the bird and save my character already. I'm getting there, Georgie. Hang on. Noble Typhon, my companion is being held in that cage over there. Will you help me free him? Roll me a persuasion check. The raven caws loudly and you can hear laughter. 
I'm too smart to put myself on the path to the gates of danger and death. I will not. I understand. Is there anything you could tell me about those bandits or the creature that also sits in the cage with my companion? There are five of the ones you call bandits. They carry small blades and are not smart. The one in the cage is not a human and plays music, which is soothing to listen to. That one also has the sorcery to commune with my kind. He also has a nice striker. He is of the satyr race and one with nature on a scale your human mind cannot comprehend. Could you pass on a message for me? You wouldn't be putting yourself in harm's way. Roll me another persuasion check. The raven shifts on the spot and looks over the bandit camp. Very well, I shall deliver you one message and one message only. Speak your words. Tell the satyr there is a friend of the turtles hiding in the trees. His name is Gormley, and he will rescue both of them. Distract as many as they can, and I'll take on as many as I can. If they can help from the cage, do so. The raven stretches its wings and takes off. Cawing loudly, it flies over the trees and vanishes. Eventually emerging near the cage, it lands on a branch and caws at the satyr. What is that? I point to the bird. It's not a what, it's a who. Who are you, my feathery friend? The raven begins cawing. Both of you would hear nothing but the caw. Oh, sugar tits, I need to cast my spell. I cast speak with animals. You begin to understand what it says. If you can help from the cage, do so. I've now delivered the message from the one named Gormley. The raven takes flight and disappears over the trees. But that wasn't the full message. Correct. Bill chose to speak first instead of casting his spell, so the raven continued speaking. You two will have to work with what information it gave you. Did you understand what that thing said? A little something about help where we can from the cage. It was delivering a message from someone called Gormley. Gormley? I shout in excitement. Some of the bandits look towards you both. Hey, shut the hell up! You got it. I shall speak no more, but how about a nice melody to go along with your campfire? Roll a persuasion check. The bandit turns to the others. What do you say, boys? Bit of music? The others grunt in agreement. Go on then, you freak. Play something. If you're any good, we may get a higher price for you. I shall play beautiful music that will drown out our voices. Roll a performance check. Your music does indeed play beautifully across the campsite, and the bandits continue to ignore you. Now that we won't, we won't be overheard, yes, it was a message from someone called Gormley. My guess is they're here somewhere and they're going to try to help break you out. I want to see if I can spot Gormley hiding. Roll a perception check. Your eyes search around the tree line and you catch a small glimpse of a human with a white beard, roughly 100 feet from you. He sees you looking at him. I smile and nod at Gormley. I see him. What can we do in here? I examine the lock on the cage. Roll me an investigation check. You're not able to tell much from examining it other than it is a lock that requires a key. I will say that you would know the bandit closest to you was the one who locked the cage. Darn, other than trying to bust the cage open, I can't do anything while stuck in here. What about you, Bill? What can you do? What even are you anyways? I'm a satyr bard slash druid. I have a small range of spells, and I think I have one that might actually be of use to us. Ever heard of Mage Hand? I have, we used it in our last campaign. Turns out we got it wrong. Oh boy, did we hear about that. But in this case, it could be used just right. What can you do with it? I think I know what Bill's planning to do, but my idea would be to have it grab the keys and bring them over to you guys. See, you see, the spell creates a magical hand that can do things. Not much as there is a weight limit, but a single key would be easy enough. Is that what you were thinking, Bill? Honestly, I was just going to give each of the bandits a reach around and help them get to sleep faster, then pick up a fiery log piece and shove it in their faces while they slept but your idea sounds better. Jesus fucking Christ, Bill. I cast Mage Hand to appear just behind the bandit who has the key. Boss man, can I appear just as the Mage Hand goes to grab the key? Why would you do that? For shits and giggles. What do you think? To cause a distraction, your fucking Mage Hand is going to get the attention of all the bandits, and they'll get that key back. But a godlike figure of mine making a dramatic entrance, that's sure to keep the focus away from it. You know what, Donald, I love that idea. I shall make it so. Bitching. The mage hands appears silently behind the bandit and as it reaches towards his pocket for the key, Swolnald Stomp comes crashing through the bramble, appearing at the bottom of the map. I walk onto the campsite and shout at these bandits. Who here thought they could play with my things and get away with it? Who the fuck is that? 
as the bandit's attention is fully on Swole. None of them notice a magical hand lifting the key from a pocket and drifting over to the cage, quietly unlocking it. My name is Swole Nold Stump, and you're all about to taste the metal of my axe as I cut your fucking heads off. Roll an intimidation check. They begin to laugh, their shock at your sudden appearance subsiding. The one who had the key stands up and brandishes a dagger. There's only you against five of us, you big ugly brute. Let's see if you handle all of us alone. The rest stand up and draw their daggers. I jump out from behind the tree. He's not alone. I kick the cage open. Four against five feels a bit more even, and I rush out of it. I'll carry on playing my loot and casually walk out of the cage. Looks like things are about to get spicy. Time for a change of tune. And I switch to my drums and bang a war beat. The bandits all begin to look uneasy as they realize they're now surrounded, but they stand their ground. The one who had the key shouts to the others. This ain't worth the money. Kill them instead. We could sell their weapons to those cultists. Did he just say cultist? Yeah, he did. I point my axe at that one and say loudly to the others, leave that one alive. Roll for initiative. I draw Night Stalker and charge.